I'm Jordan. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the American Legislative Exchange Council is ALEC. It's, uh, it's been around for 38 years now, um, almost four decades. It, they, they're kind of like a backdoor lobby group in a sense. They're extremely conservative. Um, they're extremely rich and powerful, but they've been behind the scenes for a, quite a while. Um, what's interesting about them is that they're a nonprofit group that's made up of uh, 2,000 of the United States uh, legislators, state legislators, state legislators, and um, the other part of it is comprised of corporations that pay like 14 to like 20 thousand dollars a year to be part of the group, and um, <coughs> whereas the legislators just pay like 50 dollars to be part of it. Um, so. Alec is a space where corporations and uh, special interest groups can go sit in a room with state legislators and draft model legislation that they can then bring back to their state and put into law. And most of those laws benefit the corporations and special interest groups involved. And um, also, like help the state legislators get like payoffs from it. Um, an example of that, which we'll talk about, is SB 1070, was created by Russell Pierce and the Corrections Corporation of America, CCA. And that happened um, <coughs> behind, or during an ALEC convergence, uh, an ALEC summit, I think it was in Pittsburgh, um, a couple years ago. And then Russell Pierce took that back to Arizona and uh, put 1070 into law. And now that same law, um, that model legislation that became word for word SB 1070, it's been copied all over the United States, like in Utah, Alabama, Florida, Texas. They all have like different forms of SB 1070 now. Um, is, that, is that good? Very general. Uh, yeah. So, so Alec takes these these laws, they write them, and then they give them to legislators to pass. And AlecExposed.org is a website uh, where someone inside Alec leaked over 500 of these bills, 800 of these bills that they've written. So you can go online and you can actually read them. And it's like anything that's like like right wing, like for like private. of migrants is a multi-billion dollar industry. One in which immigrants are traded like products. They are for sale to the highest bidder. Who benefits and who profits? Corrections Corporation of America, or CCA, the GEO Group, and the Management and Training Corporation combined own over 200 facilities in the nation. With over 150,000 bed spaces for a total profit of close to $5 billion per year. Private prisons profit like a hotel. The more occupants that go in, the more money comes out. You just sell it like you're selling cars, or real estate, or hamburgers. Private prisons rely on anti-immigrant laws that guarantee them access to fresh inmates. Here's how they do it. The American Legislative Exchange Council, or ALEC, is an extreme right-wing membership organization comprised of state legislators and powerful multinational corporations, including the Corrections Corporation of America. ALEC is the most active private prison lobbyist group pushing for anti-immigrant laws like Arizona's SB 1070. Russell Pierce, like CCA, is an ALEC member, one with obscure ties to national white separatist neo-Nazi groups. During an ALEC meeting, CCA and Pierce crafted a model legislation that became, almost word for word, Arizona's SB 1070. Whether people are undocumented or not doesn't matter. As long as they fill the detention facilities for days, months, 
or even years. SB 1070 and their copycat laws sprouting up across the country represent the perfect money machine. comments on that video before we move on? I think it's interesting um, to me like that's what the drug war has been doing forever since it got started basically and I just have to wonder is why would we need another one if the drug war is working so well. It kind of gives me the idea that maybe they realize with marijuana doing what it's doing that this is falling apart and with the drug cartels you know being in the limelight and people knowing that that's the issue and that our drug laws are going to be changing soon and so now they needed a new scapegoat, a new money machine. That's just kind of where what I find. Okay. Yeah, it's really only since 2000 that, um, as you'll see in here, like the amount of inmates in prison has skyrocketed. And I mean, I don't know why, but something must have been going on to mark the shift. But the crime rate's dropped. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Uh, it makes you wonder about who's reporting those crime rates. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's pretty reliable from my understanding. The crime rate really has dropped. It's just more people are getting sentenced. Right. So the first couple of slides are about just how deportations have been skyrocketing, especially this year and last year, 400,000 people. One in four people deported as a mother or father of a U.S. citizen. Um, half of those people have no criminal record, um, so you can't really say like, oh, got to get those bad people out of our country that are committing all those crimes. I'm sure everyone here knows, like, like that rhetor rhetoric is just ridiculous. <laughs> more slides about how, um, can you all read this or do you want me to read off it? You speak. Yeah. Uh, 3,000 ICE detainees per day in Arizona. That's a 58% increase over the last six years, kind of like what we were just talking about. Um, Latinos and Latinas now are half of those people sentenced. Um, there's a history in this nation of criminalizing people of color. Uh, for example, like the proportion of African Americans incarcerated and to the rest of the population is just so disproportionate that uh, it's not like any sort of coincidence, it's like a systematic pattern and the numbers are showing that like Latinos are becoming the next scapegoat for that type of um, like systematic criminalization. This talks a little bit about the private prison industry complex which is only something I've been learning about like these last couple years. Um, just how scary and large it is. Uh, so the United States loves to imprison people. We have the highest prison population out of the world. Um, 743 people per 100,000 are incarcerated. That's 25, we incarcerate 25% of the world's prisoners. And uh, yeah, since 2000, the prison population has risen 16% population in private state facilities has risen 33% and private federal facilities have risen 120%. CCA and GEO Group are both ALEC members and they're um, some of they're the biggest people that do the private prisons. CCA and GEO Group. This is just talking about how they have like revenues like in the billions um, and they have like more and more beds because it's, it's kind of like the video was saying it's like a hotel you check someone into a prison and then uh, the state pays money to the, the private company that owns that prison um, and so it's like a purely for-profit business they have like pure financial incentive and having laws passed that get more people in the prison so they make more money Alec, uh, Alec and CCA passed a law, I think it was like seven years ago, it's the um, Repeat repeat Offender Act, um, like it, you're charged with the same thing 
three times you go to jail and you have a longer sentence the third time you go. So that keeps people who get in the system, like it keeps them in the system repeatedly. And it just keeps them coming back and going back to jail. Um, it also like, the law also made for like longer probation periods. And uh, I think recently, um, California got rid of a law that Alec created that kept people in prison for longer. And what CCA did was they opened up a new prison in Arizona and they gave us all of those prisoners. So they didn't actually release any prisoners from California. They just moved them all to Arizona. Uh, does anyone have kind of a loud voice who wants to read these two direct quotes from both, both CCA and Geo Group? These are direct quotes from those two groups in their own words. CCA, the demand for our facilities and services could be adversely affected by the relaxation of enforcement efforts, leniency on conviction or parole standards and sentencing practices, or through the decriminalization of certain activities that are currently prescribed by our criminal laws. The GEO group, these people, coming, these people coming across the border and getting caught are going to have to be detained and there's going to be an enhanced opportunities for what we do. <laughs> Isn't GEO what used to be known as Black and Hot? Uh, no, that's G4S. G4S. Oh, okay. Black and Hunts is security for most persons. Um, so, I mean, even though they're self admitting, like, like there's, there's more prisoners, there's more opportunity for us to do what we do, um, if more people are detained, there's going to be, like, a need for more space for them. Along with that, CCA uh, gave 17.6 million dollars in lobbying since 2000 to federal level, GEO Group 2.4 million dollars. Um, and then uh, 2010 was the year for the most amount of donations by the private prison industry um, to campaigns. Let's see. Uh, there's a tie between like a Jan, Jan Brewer's all up in the private prison industry. Also a member of Alex. Um, there's a there's an Arizona state senator, um, ex state senator, who um, after retiring from the Senate went to be one of the chairmen of the CCA. <coughs> so right now there's a campaign from uh, De Corazon in Tucson, and they're trying to get him uh, kicked out of his seat on the CCA board. So that's uh, that's another struggle that's going on in Tucson. That's the way that they're fighting Alec. So. I thought that was very interesting. So that's just a little background behind like how far the tentacles of the private prison industry reach. And now Ari's going to talk about how that relates to ALEC. Yeah. So the American Legislative Exchange Council. Um, this is a picture of one of their meetings, and it looks extremely terrifying. Um, <laughs> can you hold it? Just like this. Um, okay. <gasps> So this is our nation's, uh, ALEC is the nation's largest um, nonprofit organization. Um, they have 2,000 legislators, um, which is two-thirds of all state legislators, and um, it's uh, 200 corporations are involved. Um, for being a nonprofit, they have a $7 million revenue a year. So ALEC has nine different task forces that deal with um, education, public safety, environmental health, um, just a few pharmaceutical companies, so like uh, people's health and uh, um, they, they have three meetings a year. There's a task force summit. That was the first one that they had this year. They had it in Cincinnati, and that's where all the task forces get together and uh, talk with special interest groups about what they can do to improve on like their certain thing. Like, what can we do in pharmaceuticals to, you know, make more profit here or, or get more like of our products out? Um, the next summit meeting that they have is I don't know. It was in August, though. Um, the one coming up. I think that one was like taxes and um, how to deal with taxes because the one here in 
about a week is the states states and nations summit. So that's like, you know, I think more revolving around like state legislators and like how it just ties it all together throughout the country. Um, okay. So Alec has um, hundreds of bills passed and are introduced annually. They've written 800 model bills. Out of those 800 bills, uh, 31, or no, 115 have been enacted. 14% of them succeeded in getting um, passed through the Senate and put into law. So they have a pretty <coughs> high success rate for drafting their bills and getting them actually put into, uh, into law. Good. So, uh, so at least a dozen of Alex members are involved with private prison work. That's um, that's a huge, huge chunk of people who are part of Alex. Um, so, like we were saying, CCA, GEO Group, um, and Whack and Hut Corrections, which is G4S, um, they're all part of the prison in in industry. Um, interesting fact: Whack and Hut has an office in Tucson. And uh, some people have taken actions there in the past, so it, they're definitely not being left alone. And then other people involved, like uh, food companies who supply all of the prisons with food, and then like um, phone companies and construction companies to build all the prisons. They're all tied in to uh, to the prison industry in this in their own way. <coughs> Okay, so this is uh, kind of what I was talking about. Truth and sentencing, the three strikes, which is the habitual offender, these were all passed in the 90s. Um, the, the prison, or the incarceration, uh, promoting incarceration began for Alec in the 1990s. That's when like you saw um, incarceration rates just absolutely spike. Like They just went up from like, a, like I don't know the exact numbers, but I just looked at it a while ago. Um, yeah, it was like a couple hundred percent increase. It was crazy. Um, so they also partnered with the NRA, National Rifle Association. Um, so 40 states passed the truth in sentencing. Uh, 25 states have the three strikes, the habitual offender. And I believe Arizona is one of those. So. Oh, it's just like their incarceration rate doubled <laughs> in the 90s. Um, it's still a huge round. Yeah. Okay. This is uh, Alec and SB 1070. So this is how um, Alec relates directly to Arizona right now, and also a bunch of the other copycat states like Alabama, Florida, Georgia. So SB 1070, just to give a quick run through, because I know a lot of people here probably know what it is, but it prohibits sanctuary policies, um, criminalizes day labor, it makes transporting and harboring immigrants uh, a misdemeanor, it requires uh, law enforcement to stop immigration, or to determine immigration status of uh, people, um, requires non-citizens to carry ID, and makes soliciting performing work illegal for undocumented people. So. Arizona's ex-senator, Russell Pierce, um, is the most outspoken person in the nation for, uh, for um, border militarization and making immigration so illegal and so, um, like, I can't remember what it's right now, um, just enforcing border laws so harshly. I think more than that. It says 36 Arizona state legislators are out members, but actually it's more about like 49, um, maybe even 61, and they're all Republicans except for one Democrat. So, um, <clears throat> um, oh, public safety and elections task force. Okay, so that's just like. That's securing public safety. So immigration is like, you know, a threat to public health or to public safety. It's terrifying. So CCA, Russell Pierce, the American Bail Coalition, NRA got together. 
figured it out. <clears throat> so it was introduced in 2009. Can I say something really quick? Yeah. Um, this is just saying that the person who drafted 1070 is a member of FAIR. Has anyone heard of FAIR? Yeah. They're part it's, of the John Tanson network. Yeah, it's just they're super. Yeah, they're they're white racist supremacists, shit. nativists. <laughs> Um, and they don't try and hide it. And no. so a lot of times in like editorials, they'll quote fair as being like, like the Republican or like the right wing balance between like the Democrat you quoted, but it's like taking like, like a, someone on the left and then like someone like crazy white supremacist on the far right and taking their opinion and having it be like a balanced article. Which is super <laughs> exciting. Um, so it was at the State and Nation Policy Summit that SB 1070 was created. Um, that's the summit that they're having this month, so, um, and that happened in D.C. Um, <clears throat> what it's called on the, what the model bill was called is No Sanctuary Cities for Illegal Immigrants Act. And that's the copycat, um, that's been the copycat law all over the United States. <laughs> it was introduced to Arizona State Legislature in January of 2010. And then oh, co-sponsored by 36 legislators, um, Jan Brewer signed it in on April 23rd, 2010. This is a little picture. Um, it's got a lot of little people on it. So just to explain it, this is the Public Safety and Elections Task Force. And this is an Alex staff director. So, oh, do you want to? explain this? Uh, I, I think it's, it's just repeat kind of visually showing what we talked about. Okay. No. It's really confusing. <laughs> yeah. I think they just pulled that from that video we watched. Okay. Um, 24 other states. All of these other states have copycat laws um, that like SB 1070. Um, right now, I know Florida's trying to battle one really hard. Uh, I think it's like HB 1046, maybe. Um, they're going through problems with that right now. Um, this is just saying like other big industries that are part of ALEC, pharmaceuticals, big pharma, mining and energy, like Luminant and, uh, and Texco in Texas. Um, also SRP and Freeport McMorrin wherever that is, right over, right over there. One of the biggest, one of the biggest contributors to ALEC. Um, then the Koch brothers fund it pretty much. Uh, do you want to say something? Yeah, just that um, we're like touching on a very specific part of ALEC, um, even though it's all interconnected, but that's just touching on how there's like so much more bad stuff that comes out of there. Like that could all have like its own lecture in itself. So. Keep that yeah. in mind. Just the mining companies alone pollute, have the most pollution uh, in the United States, like just the ones that are involved with that. Like, and they've tried to uh, stop governments from the government from regulating uh, carbon dioxide. Well, it's not just that. They've tried to strip them on, on all kinds of other shit, fracking, yeah. everything else. Yeah, and they've had like... Uh, like the workers have had strikes because they pay them like three bucks an hour and the national the international standard is usually like 17, 17 an hour yeah. and uh, they've had um, that was just this past year specifically for Freeport McMoran um, workers in Indonesia and Papua New Guinea uh, went on strike and stopped working because their wage was just so terribly low yeah and instead of like raising the wage they put a bunch of money into hiring their own private army uh, it's a deal with the uprisings where the, this year seven people died in one. I seven people, yeah. I thought the Indonesian military opened fire on them too. The striker, striking people. Uh, yeah, I think so. Probably. That's what I heard. Probably. I know that um, Alec, some, Alec has some like ties to people in government there too who like just oversee the mining. Um, <laughs> that's just this typical out because, um, oh, who were we talking, uh, we were talking to someone who's part of ALEC, and, uh, they were like, we were talking to them, we're like, oh, we just love what you did with us, like, we were 
playing a game with them. Like, we just love what you did with SB1070. And they're like, we had nothing to do with that. And got super defensive. And they're just like, no way. And so this just saying typical Alec. Like, it was drafted by um, a corporate member, part of Alec, supported by Alec members. And then Alec never intervened. And similar legislation appeared everywhere. So, like, it had to have been this model bill that came from somewhere where it was like drafted very specifically for special interest groups to make money off of. But they're like, oh, we had nothing to do with that. Like, that was not us. So whatever. Um, and this, this, is, this is happening in a week. It's terrifying. <laughs> we need as many people to like come just tell them that they're not welcome in Arizona. Like, they're not welcome in our state. Yeah, I mean, what this teaching's kind of about is it's um, preparing people for the conference that is happening at the end of the month in Scottsdale. There's a large direct action response being planned um, just to tell them, like, we do not approve of you letting this group meet in Arizona. Like, this oppressive, like, extreme group um, and there's a lot of ways to be part of that opposition. It could be anywhere from calling the hotel saying like, it's not okay you're having the conference here, um, to holding a sign with a bunch of people on the 30th in front of the hotel, to taking direct action, um, which is what our original call out was for. We sent out a, a call across the country um, calling for a diversity of tactics. And this next portion will be about how to get more involved in that. <laughs> um, hold on. Okay. Yeah, uh, this is just saying that um, the convergence against ALEC is at the States and Nation Policy Summit, so that's what this summit is going to be about. Um, November 30th through December 2nd are the dates that they're going to be having their conference. So we called for convergence from November 29th until December 3rd. Um, and everyone and anyone is welcome to plan every, anything that they want to for that. Um, address is at the bottom, there's a map up online too. Um, so, the group that we've been working with is Project Baldwin, um, or AZ Resist Alec. It's really just like not even a planning group. There's like people who are taking care of stuff, but it's like so um, decentralized. Like, that's just how we're trying to plan the whole thing. It's like having people do whatever they can and whatever they want to just make it happen. So that's been going on since about June this year, um, which seems like everything should be planned by now. But um, so there's just like a tentative schedule. We don't have to read that though. Now, if you go to acresistalec.wordpress.com, there's a really detailed schedule about the week of actions we're calling for. Um, you can choose to participate in all the different events, or if the addresses are posted, you can kind of pick and choose. Uh, so, and there's, I mean, along with like a bunch more information, you can find that on the WordPress website, and we'll like talk about that address again later, if you haven't written it down yet. <laughs> it's right there! <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. That's the slideshow part. Yeah, um, yeah so, uh, I guess you want to talk about how to get plugged in? Uh, well, first, does, does it, like, does anyone want to... To have any thoughts about the presentation? Um, we obviously have given this a million times and know every slide like the back of our hands. <laughs> um, but just like thoughts, general reactions. Is this stuff you already knew? Is it new to you? It was all new to me. Yeah, it, it was nice to learn about it. You know, I had no clue really. I heard the name and I had no clue about it. You know, I didn't know if you guys. I didn't know if you guys were Alec. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's good to know. Yeah. I'm a bad people out there that hate. Oh, I just had a question. I'm sorry. Big stack. Um, okay. You said that they had written some like 800 bills or something like that, and 153 or something like that in the past. Um, do you know if Task is one of those? If they if they're behind Task? Yes. That's the um, the drug thing. Yeah. I uh, wouldn't be surprised. If you go to alecexpose.org where they posted all those bills, they separated them into like categories for what the bills are about, and it's really easy searchable. Okay. It's really user friendly. Find your answer in two seconds. I was just going to say. Probably. <laughs> um, it's, you know, like I had a general idea about what Alec was, and it's not at all surprising to me that 
corporations and state power have like convulged into like a nonprofit organization yeah. to kind of use that. Because you hear nonprofit and you're like, oh, happy butterflies, <laughs> yay, you know, but like it really just goes to show how like the whole nonprofit industry can be used for something completely contrary to human rights and justice and all these different things. Yeah, they actually have a, there's an investigation into it about challenging their nonprofit status because they're clearly a lobbying group. Mm -hmm. I mean, li liberal groups, like, the practice of taking a special interest group and having them write a bill and introducing it to a legislator, like, that's legal and it happens on the right and the left. But the difference between ALEC is just, like, the scope of it and, like, the systematicness where with private prisons, with private prisons where, um, like, these private companies will get support from lawmakers because lawmakers get support from the voters who are like, yes, I don't like immigrants, I will vote for you because you're tough on immigration. But then they're really accepting money from these like giant private prison corporations. Um, it's just, it's like this cycle that like, at any level I feel like you can break that chain. Like you can get voters to like, not be so like in the dark about what they're voting for or you can like expose out or you know, you're just like exposing different parts of the chain like if you attack it in every direction. And this is just like the part of the chain that we're choosing to go after. <laughs> you have a question? Yeah, well, what you were saying, like I was thinking like as, uh, I don't even, my thought's not fully put together yet, but I'm gonna start saying it anyway. Um, so like for like a direct action, I mean, it seems to me like, you know, our society, you know, people say, well, we have jails and prisons to rehabilitate people to make them better. And I think so many people are still locked in that ideal that our prisons or jails are put there to rehabilitate people. And, and we all know that it's obviously, that's not the case. It's a, it's a business, it's money, and that's all it is. And I think like you were saying, like we need to get people to understand what's really going on out there. So, I mean, to plan some kind of direct action to you know, show that the prison systems and the jail systems are not about rehabilitation at all, and that they are fully about, um, you know, just money and business like I think people would have I think people more people need to understand that <coughs> understand that basically that and they don't think that they think prisons for rehabilitation and I think that's a farce. Can I directly respond to that? Is that what it is? Um, part of our organizing model we're using is encouraging different groups who are, are forming affinities and coming out to draft their own press release saying like this is why we oppose ALEC um, and so a group can like choose to hone in on whatever they want and then it can all be connected by the larger picture but um, I think that'll be useful for the exposing aspect of it because like you can just like um, zoom in on like like one thing ALEC does you know rather than like our small group trying to be like Alex bad for this 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 right, this right. this <laughs> <Ever. Yeah. laughs> I don't, I don't even know what, what an action like that would be entitled or something. It's just like, like I said, I just, I just kind of like threw it out there to, I don't know, just throw it out there for now. Yeah. But I mean, that's something that like I've been bothered with. I mean, I grew up with my family in the prison system, and so for me it's nothing new. And I was able to see over and over and over and over again how they're not rehabilitating anybody. They're not trying to help anybody. They're just putting them through the system. And, you know, firsthand, yeah, making them worse. And firsthand, you know, growing up with that and seeing that, um, I lost faith in, in the courts and the justice system when I was a kid immediately because I realized that my parents weren't getting, coming out of prison and being better people. They were coming out of prison and being more institutionalized and more afraid to stand up and more afraid to work hard than ever before because they've been beaten down and told like, no, you belong here. This is what you need to do. You're a criminal. And it's not about being a criminal. It's about being a better person, you know. And, uh, I don't know, the prison, the private prison system is, it's got to be stopped. I, mean, I don't know, I'm just kind of bad with it, sorry. Yeah, is there any information on, like, how many Native Americans are in prison? Um, like, from, from us, or? Just, I was just uh, curious, because historically, of course, the Native Americans were here for thousands of years. And there was uh, no prisons, and uh, you know, <clears throat> kind of the first prison, so to speak, for them was the reservations. You know, they went from uh, having free, free immigration throughout the, you know, the country to, you know, being forced to uh, uh, 
you know, a small, a small area. And um, so I was just curious, you know, how the Native Americans, what their population is in prison. Yeah, I want to talk about that. Yeah, it's, um, I don't have a number for how many are in prison. I'm sure that the incarceration rate, because they are people of color, and because the government has, like, very legitimately tried to, like, wipe that, that, that culture out completely, like, indigenous genocide is, like, totally a, true, a real thing, and you see it happening all the time. Besides incarceration, though, like, one way that they're doing that is forced relocation constantly. Like, Peabody and the Salt Robert River Project are two mining companies in Arizona that continually force indigenous people off their land and keep them moving away from like their their cultural areas so they have to like you know that's not how they were raised or what their history is for for living they have to like find some new way in the middle of nowhere like to adapt and live out there um, so I don't know about the incarceration rates of Native Americans but I got a question for you. Uh, I don't understand all the ins and outs of this. Uh, <coughs> there is an or uh, there are people writing a constitutional amendment to uh, stop money in politics, uh, so billionaires and special interest groups like Alex can't uh, control the uh, uh, Congress government. Um, some, uh, some of that, I suspect this is almost a way around it. You form a, a, a non-profit group, and you pay your 50 bucks, and you're part of that, and then this stuff comes uh, separated. Uh, it might be a, a it's, one, uh, it's one thing to um, stop, you know, at the, at the Congress level, but this seems like it's a little bit more surreptitious than that. Uh, in other words, it's almost like a way around a constitutional amendment to get the mo uh, money out of politics. Does that ring a bell with anybody? It's backdoor lobbying, yeah, for sure. It's, it's what? It's definitely like backdoor lobbying practices. It, it back to, yeah, it's, uh, it's, a, it's one removed. You know, if we get the amendment and attack the lobbying directly, well, there's still the, what do you call it, the, uh, the secret lobby. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to say, um, I know that people have been there are people from the Navajo Nation, the whole Odom Nation, who have been detained and in a couple, a couple cases deported because they had they had their tribal ID and they were told the Border Patrol said that's not proof of U.S. citizenship. So they're actually dumped across the border. Yeah. And the I mean, border militarization also like breaks up Tohono Autumn land. So like there's like Mexico side and Arizona side, which also is like splitting up the culture. Um, if I could, I mean, we could keep talking definitely, but I was just gonna say there's a, a piece of paper going around that has signups for different things um, for this week of action that has been planned. There's um, there's things like we did a nationwide call out, so we have anywhere from 100 to 1,000 people coming into Arizona and Phoenix specifically. 